Hey guys, Milk Cookies and Games here. Welcome to episode 26 of our Gates of Hell Gem Editor tutorial series. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be doing the cinematic camera. Uh, so today's video will be quite simple, uh, short and sweet. So let's get into it. All right, so go into F3 mode. I'm going to come down to the camera icon. Uh, and for the purpose of the video today, I'm going to do something short, um, but you'll be able to apply this knowledge to your own cinematics. Anyway, we're going to have the camera go along the beach. Um, so let's start the camera about here. Come to the camera icon, right click in the top box, call it something. So let's intro. Select it. Come to the keyframes box and go right click add. So we've just placed our first keyframe. Move forward, about here, add another keyframe, add another keyframe, and another keyframe. And then we're gonna have the camera come around and face forward at the bunkers, at more or less a soldier's perspective. Awesome. So you can preview, so if you click preview, bang. Awesome, how good's that? All right, also with each keyframe, if you double click it, it will actually take you to those different keyframe points. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you how to slow the camera down. Uh, for example, as the camera is going along the beach, uh, just picture soldiers running up the beach. There's chaos, bullets, bombs, all that sort of uh, stuff. And you wanna capture that, right? So let's slow the camera down. So what we want to do is leave the first key at zero seconds. Come to the second one, click the expand button. And I was playing around and I think three seconds is actually not too bad. And then what we want to do is in the next keyframe, we want to plus three seconds onto the other three we just did. So six and then nine. Um, and then this one, we want it to instantly go to the net, to this keyframe. So let's go 10. Now, the reason why we didn't put a delay or, uh, three seconds here is, uh, if we do that, the camera will stay at this keyframe for three seconds, right? We don't want that. We want it to start moving as soon as we click start. Um, unless that's the sort of effect you're going for, then you can. Also with the keyframes, you can actually put a pause. Um, so you could put, when it reaches this keyframe, it will pause for three seconds. So say if you want to capture uh, something or, you know, whatever it may be, and you want the camera to pause on that specific uh, unit or object, you can put in a timer here. Uh, for example, three seconds, it'll wait three seconds, and then it'll move to the next keyframe within that three seconds we put here. Um, that's how it it works in my head, how that system would work. Um, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments below. Cool, so now that we've done that, let's preview. You can see how it's nice and slower than it was before. Now we can really capture the grittiness of... Uh, the beach landing and it'll fling straight there. Now, what if we did, we kept it at four seconds here. If we preview that, you notice that there's no line um, as it was shown before. That's because it doesn't just fling, it's just straight there, right? It's like a cut, as if it, um, like a movie cut, which can be quite useful. The reason being is because we don't, we have the four seconds, obviously, it's not, uh, what's what's the word? For example, we had 10 before, right? So obviously 10 comes after nine. So yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm sure you'll understand what I'm trying to get at. But um, four is less than nine. So it doesn't make sense in the timeline, right? That's why the, the line's not there. So if we go back to 10, you can see the line, how it follows on. And if we go back to four, 
it goes away. Um, yeah. But depends on what you're after. If you want this effect where it cuts it and goes straight to the keyframe. Oops, I moved. Um, then this is probably the best option for you. Otherwise, you can do what we did before and have it come after keyframe three. Where the camera will follow the proper line. So, but well, let's just keep it at four because um, I like the cut. Cool. So let's say you're happy with that. We're all happy. Make sure you save your mission. Come in here and let's create the script for it. Um, so let's just go USA. Cinematic. And we want to go to scene. Load up scenario. Pretty much you come down to the name. Select the one we want. So intro. Um, if you guys noticed in the base game, uh, when there's an intro, you have sometimes have the option to click continue in the top right hand corner. If you wanted to disable that, then you click this box. That way it forces the player to watch the cutscene. Um, basically what these mean is wherever the camera is right now, for example, right here, if we were to click start, it will do a smooth transition to that first keyframe. I don't want that. I want it to snap straight away to the first keyframe. And same thing at the end, wherever the camera is, once the cutscene finishes, it'll move the camera back to where the, the camera is now. Uh, it's nice and smooth. Or you can just cut it. It'll go straight back. Um, force auto complete you want turned on. Um, especially if you have disabled cancelled what will happen is it will get to the last keyframe um, and if you just click this checkbox here to stop the player from clicking continue what will happen is we'll get to the last keyframe and it will just stay in that cinematic mode it won't auto complete or force complete so if you're going to do that make sure you tick this box that way when it gets to the last keyframe it'll automatically complete it and then the player can have full control of uh, the game again uh, yep, that's loop, self-explanatory there. You can add sound if you want. Um, if you want music going, um, or you could do... Um, world. Let's just do ambient artillery. Let's just do that one. You can add text as well. It'll be down the bottom there, so... Um, intro text, click it, let's just say, um, D-Day, 1944, all right, whatever you want to put. Cool, uh, let's add a quick delay just so it doesn't happen straight away when I click start. There you go. There's the text down the bottom. Hear the sound going. Which was a very quick sound. So, there you go. It auto-completed straight away. Uh, as you can see there, the force auto-complete. But if we turn that off and just put the continue uh, option, probably be a better outcome. So let's, and let's change that sound. That sounds stupid. Yeah, let's just do that. There you go. You can click continue in the top right hand corner now. And boom, cut straight here. You could probably have this is where the player will start or something like this. 
Um, yeah, and then click continue and away you go. That's pretty much cinematics uh, or a very basic um, way of using cinematics in uh, Gates of Hell. It's pretty much the same with any other Men of War title as well, for those who are curious. Um, that pretty much concludes this this tutorial, guys. Uh, I hope it was useful. hope you guys uh, learned something from it. Uh, just quickly, regarding the previous video with the minefield objective. Um, there was some comments before or made on the video with uh, it. It could be, you know, uh, the player could exploit or, um, you know, have issues with this. So if we click start, I did, I read the comments and I'm like, oh yeah. And the person who wrote the comment is 100% right. You can use vehicles and, or grenades or explosions. I did find though, when throwing just a hand grenade, it was very hard to detonate the mines. Like you can see there's one right there and it didn't detonate. You really got to get the grenade like on point. Um, in terms of vehicle, yep, you can use these against anti-personnel mines. Just obviously these guys have got tires. So you will damage the vehicle. Um, if I just use these guys just to show you. I turn the engine on. Obviously, remember, yes, they are, they are explosions. They will damage the vehicle. Um, if you use a tank, probably a different outcome, honestly. I'm not sure. If you press three, there's still mines. So you have the potential of losing more soldiers if it came down to repairing the vehicle. He's pretty close to that mine. So uh, the only way I got an explosion to work it was going service damage explosion and that worked as you can see <laughs> but yes um the individual who wrote the comment is 100 percent correct the player if you made a mission could use ex grenades or vehicles to bypass the use of the mine detector you know sort of exploit um whatever you know it uh, doesn't really matter it comes down to like that individual said in the comment the intended goal so but yeah i just thought i'd point that out because i was intrigued um myself yeah awesome comment thank you for commenting that yeah it's pretty much it guys um if you've got any other questions or queries or anything like that put it down below and i'll do my best to help you out um or someone else can can uh, help out and that's even even better um but yeah apart from that guys please like comment subscribe um also actually before i do finish this video if i put another poll up i'll wait 48 hours for everyone to vote and then i'll go from there from the highest set of votes down to the lowest um yeah sweet thanks for watching guys see you in the next one bye for now